Welcome back. Today, we have Tom and Jess here to give us an overview of our range of silicon photomultipliers, how they compare to other products, and how they can be used across a variety of different applications. So to start with, why don't you tell us which technologies we'll be discussing today? So today, we'll be talking about MPPCs, or multi-pixel photon counters. These are also known as silicon photomultipliers, or SIPMs. MPPCs are solid-state photomultipliers designed to detect very low light levels, even down to the photon counting level. These sensors are made up of a tightly packed grid of avalanche photodiode pixels, with each pixel detecting a single photon at a time. My colleague Tom will explain how MPPCs work in more detail later in the video. What is it that makes MPPCs stand out from other silicon detectors? Well, MPPCs have several features that set them apart from other solid-state detectors. In general, they have a high photon detection efficiency, wide spectral range from UV to NIR, and a fast response speed, which in turn gives MPPCs an excellent time resolution. When compared specifically to avalanche photodiode detectors, MPPCs are able to have much larger active areas, as they are not limited by the same high levels of dark current as APDs. Then, compared to regular silicon photodiodes, MPPCs have an added high gain, increasing the signal-to-noise ratio so that lower light levels can be detected. Okay, great. But how does their performance compare to electron tube products such as PMTs? Okay, so to begin with, MPPCs operate at a lower voltage, so they require lower power consumption than PMTs, and therefore have reduced running costs. Also, unlike electron tube alternatives, MPPCs benefit from being unaffected by magnetic fields, high resistance to mechanical effects, and are not subject to destruction when the incident light exceeds the saturation level. Being so robust, means that MPPCs can be used in a wide variety of environments and applications that would simply destroy a PMT. However, MPPCs aren't 100% an improvement over PMTs. To date, they still generally have a higher noise current than PMTs. MPPCs also cannot have the same wide active areas that a PMT can achieve without drastically increasing the noise current. So now we know what an MPPC is and what benefits it has, what kind of applications would these sensors be best suited for? Good question. So MPPCs can be used for all sorts of applications, from distance measuring using LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, to PET, or positron emission tomography, for the detection of various diseases and injuries. One particularly exciting application of Hamamatsu's MPPCs is in monitoring the neutrino beams from the T2K source in Japan. These neutrinos are a vital part of the Super Cameo Candy experiment, which is aiming to verify whether the neutrino has mass. So now Tom is going to explain how MPPCs work. So how do they work? Similar to avalanche photodiodes, which you may have heard of, MPPCs have a bias voltage applied across them. This means that they undergo an internal amplification effect. In an MPPC, the bias is increased to the point where a single excitation in the photosensitive region will cause a sustained avalanche signal. This is known as Geiger mode and can be used for identifying single photons. To achieve a useful signal, the diode must have a smaller active area than a normal APD and have a quenching resistor in series. This allows for the dark count to be minimised and the avalanche to stop once it has been detected. Just one of these diodes is commonly known as a single photon avalanche diode and is what can be found in our photon counting modules, with dark counts as low as 7 counts per second. To increase the active area to sizes comparable to other photodetectors, we can connect many of these sensors in parallel and arrange them in a grid of pixels, hence the name multi-pixel photon counter. These pixel sizes can range from 10 to 50 micrometers and the size should be selected based on the characteristics such as dark count and fill factor. What kind of output do we expect to see? Here we have an MPPC used with one of our evaluation boards. It's connected to a 5 volt power supply and an oscilloscope to read the signal. We're keeping the MPPC in a dark environment so we can evaluate some of its unique characteristics. Here we can see some normal behaviour of the MPPC. The output pulses have a duration on the order of nanoseconds and can be seen in the centre here. 
pulses we see are known as dark pulses and are the result of thermal fluctuations in the MPPC. We also have digital modules which will output a number of counts over a certain period and then display them as a graph against time in our evaluation software. Occasionally, an excited pixel can cause neighbouring pixels to produce signals in a phenomenon known as crosstalk. This results in a pulse two or three times as high and its frequency can be roughly measured using our oscilloscope. Another characteristic we can see here is after pulsing, where shortly after an initial pulse, another one occurs. This happens because charge carriers can get trapped within impurities in the avalanche region. These charge carriers can then escape the impurity and trigger another signal. This is an unwanted characteristic and Hamamatsu has worked significantly to reduce the occurrence in our newest MPPCs. If people want to find out more information, what should they do? For more information about MPPCs and related products, please feel free to contact us via our website or send an email to info at hamamatsu.co.uk.